So back when we initially derived the Bernoulli equation, we started off with Euler's integral formulation of his equations, and we integrated over a streamline and landed at the classical Bernoulli equation that we all know and love. That is the, the pressure term, the velocity term, and the elevation term at any point in a streamline should be equal to a constant. Now we've derived Euler's equations in its differential formulation. Now the question is, can we go from Euler's differential formulation and still land at the Bernoulli equation? Now the answer should be yes, but getting there may be a little bit tricky. So in order to do that, let's recall the following. The material derivative of the velocity is equal to the local change in, velo in velocity plus the convective change in velocity. However, when we study the del operator, we notice that the convective change in velocity can actually be written as a function of the del operator. That means that the material derivative can be expressed as the local change in velocity plus the convective change expressed in terms of the del operator as our velocity dot del operator applied to the velocity vector. Now, why is this important? If we can express this term and apply it into Euler's equation, we may be able to use some of our vector identities to simplify Euler's equation and express it in a way that is more similar to the Bernoulli equation that we want to get at. So let's write down Euler's equation in differential form. Euler's equation stated that the density times the material derivative of the velocity was equal to negative gradient of the pressure plus my gravitational force. If we want to express our material derivative in terms of the del operator, we can replace this entire term with the local and the convective changes. Therefore, that will leave us with an equation of density times my local change plus my convective change. And the rest of the equation should look the same. So why do I want to do that? When we were looking at the different vector identities, we found that we can apply an operator of the del operator into another vector and that that operation actually gave us the following vector identity. If we took, if we formed an operator formed by a vector and the del operator and we applied that operator to its own vector, then that would be equal to about one half del of my function squared minus the cross product of my function of my vector function and the cross product of the del operator and the vector function. Now from our initial lessons we know that we can call this the curl which is sometimes called the rotation of our function. And we also know that the f term that is not a vector is actually a scalar that represents the magnitude of my function vector. So why do we care about this? We can apply this vector identity into this operator. Notice that we have the operator formed by the vector and the del operator applied to the same vector. So this entire vector identity will apply into our Euler equation. So what does our Euler equation look like when we apply this operator? We will have my density term. We will have the local change. And now I can apply this vector identity. I'll have one half del of the magnitude of my function squared, that is the magnitude of the velocity squared, minus 
the cross product of my velocity vector and my curl. All this should equal the gradient of my pressure field and the gravitational force. So we're getting somewhere. Notice that it start, the equation is starting to take a little bit of shape. Now, if we want to get to Bernoulli's equation, we need to remember that Bernoulli assumed ideal flow conditions. Now, what did ideal flow conditions entail? An ideal flow is supposed to be inviscid, but we already know that because Euler's equations assume inviscid flow. But an ideal flow also requires my flow to be steady. If my flow is steady, that means that any change that occurs with respect to time should be zero because there is no change with respect to time. Now what does that mean for this equation? If we look at the local change, change in velocity with respect to time, when we assume steady flow, then that change should be equal to zero. So we can cancel it out of our equation. This gives us a more manageable form of the equation where we have my density term multiplied by my convective change. We have common density terms in this equation, so let's th divide the entire equation by density. If we derive, divide this term by density, the density term will cancel out. We can divide the pressure, the gradient of the pressure by density, and we can divide our gravitational, actual, our gravitational force term by density in order to cancel out the density term. And this leaves us with the convective change free of any factor. All right. Now, let's recall what this gravity vector meant. We have defined the gravitational acceleration vector as equal to negative my gravitational acceleration multiplied by the unit vector k. However, we can express this unit vector k in terms of the del operator. Notice that if we apply the del operator to a dimension z. This should be equal to the partial of my z dimension with respect to x in the x direction plus the partial of my z dimension with respect to y in the y direction plus the partial of my z direction with respect to z in the z direction. Notice that partial z with respect to x should be zero because z has nothing to do with my x direction. Partial z with respect to y should be zero because z has nothing to do with my y direction. And partial z with respect to z is simply one. That means that applying the del operator to a dimension z should be equal to just one times k or simply the k unit vector. If we do this, then we can substitute my k unit vector with the del operator of my z direction. This will make my equation look like this. <coughs> 
So our equation is starting to take some shape. Let's rearrange some of these terms. We want our pressure term to be the first term in our equation, just like the Bernoulli equation. So I'm going to write the pressure term first. Moving it to the other side, so the sign changes to positive. I want my velocity term squared to be next in line. And finally, I want my elevation term to be next. I should note that because the gravitational acceleration vector is negative the gravitational acceleration scalar, this sign should be a negative. So moving it to the other side of the equation will convert this into a positive term. Now, now that I've rearranged all my terms, I have what's left over on the right side of the equation, which is the cross product of the velocity vector and the curl of the velocity vector. Now, since our flow travels along a streamline, Right? If we want to take Bernoulli's equation, part of the ideal flow assumptions is that the flow travels along a streamline. Let's define a differential length vector ds. My differential length vector ds will travel in the direction of the streamline. So if I were to graphically represent my streamline, then I can say that my differential vector ds represents a differential length along that streamline, an infinitesimally small length. So why do I do this? If I can define this differential vector, then I can take the dot product of this vector with each of the terms in this equation on the left and on the right sides of the equation. So that will leave me with my pressure term dot my differential streamline vector. My velocity term dotted with my differential streamline vector and my gravity term or elevation term dotted with my differential streamline vector. All this should be equal to the cross product of my velocity vector with my curl of the velocity dotted with the differential streamline vector. So this is the equation that we have for now. Let's try to analyze this equation a little bit. Let's remember that the cross product of two vectors yields a vector that's normal to both vectors. So in this case, the cross product of the velocity vector and the curl of the velocity should result in a vector that it's normal to the velocity vector. Since our flow travels along a streamline, then the velocity vector and the streamline vector should be parallel. Because this cross product is normal to the velocity vector, that means it is also normal to the streamline vector. But now when we take the dot product of two orthogonal vectors, then that product should be equal to zero because they are perpendicular to each other. That means that this dot product, the dot product of the velocity cross the curl of the velocity and the streamline vector should be equal to zero. And that leaves us with a more simplified equation where we have a pressure term, a velocity term,
and an elevation term. Now this is starting to look more and more like the Bernoulli equation where we have our three terms on the left side of the equation. Let's also note that for a scalar function f, and a differential length vector ds, the gradient of my scalar function dotted by my differential length vector should be equal to a differential value for my scalar function. If we apply this, this relationship to the equation above, we'll get the following relationships. We will get that the gradient of pressure dot ds is simply equal to a differential change in pressure. The gradient of velocity squared dot ds is simply equal to a differential change in velocity squared. And the gradient z dot ds is simply equal to a differential change in elevation. Let's make those substitutions in our equation. That will leave us with a differential pressure divided by the density of the fluid element plus a differential velocity term divided by 2 plus a differential elevation term multiplied by gravitational acceleration and all this should be equal to 0. Now this looks almost like the equation we had when we derived in the integral formulation. Notice that now all we have to do is integrate this equation along a streamline and divide it by gravitational acceleration. So let's do those final two steps quickly. We can integrate all of these terms along a streamline to get an equation of pressure divided by density plus one half of velocity squared plus gravitational acceleration times an elevation and all this should be equal to a constant. If we derive, if we divide all of the terms in this equation by gravitational acceleration, we will get pressure divided by density times gravitational acceleration. And we know that density and gravitational acceleration is equal to the specific weight of the fluid. Plus, we'll have 1 over 2 times velocity squared divided by gravitational acceleration. So that is a velocity squared divided by 2 times gravitational acceleration. And then we will have our elevation divided by gravitational acceleration where the G term cancels out and we end up with an elevation term. And all of this is equal to a constant. And there you have it. We have derived Bernoulli's equation and we've derived at the same equation that we learned earlier in class, but following the differential formulation.